Sacred Mountain, we're back here. Gonna do chapter one and two. Here we go. Chapter one, shopping. We're looking to get out of the city and retreat to nature. When Andy, Wendy and I used to try to, to, to try and camp on the weekends, and I say try because there was always some problem to deal with. When I met my gal, I was working for my father building grocery stores. It was an insane job where I would work crazy long hours, did the 100 hour work week every once in a while. We did remodels and build stores like Walgreens, Vons, Food for Less, Apple, Apple Markets, and others. My first project was the Upland Bakery. It's still open uh, today and looks great. Uh, we swing in every few years to check it out when we're visiting family down south. When we lived in the city, there was always a problem from some guy digging in our trash at the apartment or when we were camping over bearing park rangers running the, ruining the serenity of nature. They like to tell you where you can and can't camp, squeeze you into campsites after campsite in the name of safety. If I wanted uh, blaring mariachi music, I would have just camped in the parking lot of our apartment in Chino. <laughs> after SLS construction shut down mainly over sh a shitty developer, this guy attempted to not pay on a two-year project that was a ground up of a large shopping center. I spent my summer finishing that job with a uh, reward after finishing being a DUI in jail time. Don't ever go to party in Yosemite National Park, tell you what. The jail had a small window with a view of Half Dome, which seemed twisted to me, right? Moving on from construction, I was looking at a completely fresh start. Wendy and I decided that with her massage business, we could look to homestead somewhere else, maybe somewhere in nature. We had, a few months earlier, experienced a UFO close encounter. I self-published a book about it, and that experience was one of the driving factors for looking to escape the city. Wendy's uncle was a bear hunter with dogs. Not my sort of thing, but he suggested that we check out Kern County in the Paiute Mountains. He knew this place that was up there for sale. The Stubbs place was right at the top of the mountain. 6,500 feet by my estimation. It was a 10 acre mountain top property with a traditional built home with a small pond. We thought that, we thought that that was the place to make a homestead. The house was not permitted and we were told no one on the, on the Paiutes has permits. We were told with uh, pure sincerity that if we brought the building inspector up there, the neighbors would lynch us. As stupid as that sound, it turned out to be true. And we get uh, to that years later when we were selling mountain parcels with Sager Mountain Properties. I do think things happened for a reason and we were given a, good, a few good reasons to not buy that place. The first was when Wendy flushed the toilet and the entire two-story house shook with the weirdest pumping sound. Wah, ba, 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 boosh. <laughs> the two homeowners were shocked that Wendy flushed after only going number one. So funny at the time, scary and uncomfortable. The sellers then told us they didn't have a real septic with proper fall, so they have to pump the sewer out. So no flushing number one, because every flush required that industrial pump to run. We, of course, inquired about where the waste goes, they said, well, we just keep, in, we keep filling 50-gallon drums. When it's full, we just dig a new one out in the yard. Of course, I had questions about how many drums there were on the acreage over the years and how many uh, sewer was in the two large acre pond. <laughs> how much sewer is in the pond? The sellers were generous with their naturalized beer, so we had headaches after every visit. Communication was, of course, by mail only, or you could drive up the mountain. One time on the way down the mountain, which was an hour drive on a dirt road, right before the peak at 7,000 feet, we encountered a, a bee in the red truck. It was just before we headed down the switchbacks. The big city guy that I am stopped the truck, jumped out screaming and swatting the air. Wendy jumped out as well in an attempt to help me. We were standing near the back of the tailgate when we looked at the truck heading down the hill toward, for the switchbacks. It was in gear still. Wendy was sprinting in front of me, and I could see that the truck was accelerating heading down the hill. She was the first to react, and I was under a bee attack. She started running and just made it to the door as the truck was now matching her sprint. She jumped and made it in the truck, saving the day and it was, as it was speeding towards the switchbacks and a cliff. I can remember the feeling of instant guilt and then pure relief as I saw the truck taillights. 
And on another trip down the mountain, we encountered a baby deer lying on the side of the road. It looked like it was just born and had fallen off an embankment. I stopped, and when he got out, she massaged the baby deer's leg, and it happened to reset its hip. The deer looked at her, jumped up, and ran up the hill. It was a special moment. We knew that then this mountain was right for us, just not so high and maybe a different place. Later, we learned that it's very difficult to uh, weather the winters atop of the Paiutes with the heavy snow, no power, and tough roads. I now sell properties in the area at the top of the mountain, and one year I sold five properties, and the next year after the winter, we relisted three of them. Disclosures really don't give a good picture of what it's like in five feet of snow, no power, and bears trying to get in. Not to mention the Sasquatch. We shopped in Walker Basin in Twin Oaks. One time while shopping in Twin Oaks, which was a horse community, we stopped in the local Twin Oaks General Store. We were met with the rudest old man giving me shit for smelling like cannabis. That old bastard was related to the owner. We didn't get back into Togs or Twin Oaks General Store for two years. Later, we came around to that place and frequented it quite often. We eventually had the store listed, and after many years on the market, we presented a viable offer that was rejected. Then that same old bastard and his wife did a deal and let <coughs> did a deal and let us know by telling us our listing was expired. Typical. The good thing that we focused on our search in Walker Basin kept away from that old cowboy vibe down there in Twin Oaks. Most of them old cowboys become fr friends or acquaintances of Wendy's and mine after some time. A lot of good people and some different ones. As an ad lib, the best <laughs> the best picture of what the vibe in Twin Oaks was would be that movie Rango, if you've seen it. I guess it's like that when you start any new adventure. It's your choice who you're going to be to the public, how you will act, and if you will stand up for yourself. Those choices are what makes us who we are. And, it was, and I was a bit like the, the city lizard just thrown into the, cattle, into the cattle basin on the edge of the forest. I had no idea of all the adventures that were waiting for me and that I would have to posture to everyone. Even the little old ladies carry guns and attitudes up here. I think me and my crazy CTE behavior had finally found the perfect environment for staying out of jail, mainly because the law doesn't like to go up the mountain. It sure is uh, counterintuitive that a few years later I would become a government agent, real estate agent, that is. Especially being involved with the sheriff, probation, and all them folks. Driving around looking at possibilities for our new ranch and opportunities in the area on the weekends was fun. When we, we were always really tripping out to see all those cowboys, young and old, driving around with a beer or even a flask. In Caliente, which consists of Twin Oaks and Walker Basin, there has always been the wave. Locals will always locals will wave at each other as they go by to indicate they are local. This stems from way back in the old West times when the stages would come through. Our main road, the Lions Trail, Caliente Bodfish Road, or the Creek, Caliente Creek, were the only ways to get from Lake Isabella and Havila to Bakersfield which was a time was uh, a swamp filled with degenerates, according to history. In, the, in them days, Lake Isabella and were, Havila were the main settlements. That's, that's kind of true to Nate today, too, right? <laughs> I don't like Bakersfield. Woo. The stagecoach drivers and people uh, on the horses would, tr would tip their hats up so they could look each other in the eyes as they went by. This was a necessity tool back then as they were... State coach robbers, especially on the Lions Trail back down to Bakersfield. For years to year, for, from year to year, that uh, common hat tilt courtesy turned into a wave. And when we were shopping for property during the time of the, the, the aging cowboys, the wave actually included a beer or flask or usually a swerve or two. <clears throat> That's some good advice. Never try and pass a drunk cowboy, no matter how slow they are going or what they are driving, from pickup to tractor, especially a tractor. If you're in a hurry, well, then you're messing with them open-range cows. I got to say, we thought the freedom of a beer wave back then was to be a refreshing change from our city life, and it is. We did find our dream property with home. The home itself sat on the peak of what looked like a small pyramid mountain overlooking Walker Basin. We learned later that it was built atop an Indian shaman site. 
the curator of the ghost town in Botfish was actually making fun of this family that bought this crazy place out on that site. He was t uh, talking uh, about us not knowing we were, we were the family. We have a story to tell now in the ghost town. The review was breathtaking. Perfect for the, the shaman to keep over the watch over the entire tribe. The small, open, stick-built traditional home was ideal for the three of us. The 47.5 acres of land included the mountain and two canyons. Moving in itself was exciting. My parents didn't understand why we were ha hauling large rocks or small boulders that Winnie had collected over the years. It didn't bother me at all. We had the moving truck we rented, and I was willing to haul whatever she wanted. Moving them little boulders helped me later with real estate. We sold this guy ranch a few years back and he got stuck in the mud moving in. We had the Jeep all at, we had the Jeep and at the time I had a 5,000 pound winch on it. So of course I would pull this guy's truck out of the mud. It, it was the muddy driveway that I just sold him. I, I had real incentive to help him get all his stuff to the house. We drove that Jeep around him and got above him on the road. As we drove by him, I did notice a tarp in the back of the truck covering his stuff he was moving in. I got the, the winch ready and uh, spooled out quite a distance so the Jeep was on dry ground. I started the winch and then began to take line in. But instead of his truck moving, the Jeep was getting pulled downhill. I let Wendy know to pull it in reverse and give it some gas while I spooled in the winch. Just as we did that, I could hear the winch uh, start squealing, then there was smoke. We stopped and the winch was dead. In my frustration, <coughs> I had Winnie gun it in reverse and we pulled the truck up the hill which froze winch gears holding tight. After it was up the hill, I jumped out, frantically grabbed my bolt cutters and cut and ran this disaster and cut and ran after this disaster. I could hear Wendy uh, talking with our client, the new owner. As I approached the front of the Jeep, I saw Wendy heading towards the truck. I snipped the winch cable and ran up what was left. As I with what was left. I, I walked up to Wendy. I could tell she was a bit shocked. As I approached the tuck, I could see the tarp was covering a bed full of little boulders, just like the ones we collect in our city for our big move to the country. We had to get this, uh, the, mat, the mat over it. I was, probably would have tried even if I knew he was traveling with boulders. We now have a 12,500 pound winch that I haven't managed to break yet. Driving the U-Haul uh, to our new home wasn't so easy. I think they are all automatics now, but back then they were stick shifts. I could drive a stick, sort of. I mean, I can do it, but it's not desirable or enjoyable. I really question how beat up this truck's transmission already was when we left. Maybe. <laughs> By the time we got to the freeway, I had lost first gear. The truck was geared so low that I would, <coughs> however, still start from a stop in second. Most of the driving was on the open road anyway, so we went off. I was, it was going to be a big change for me and Wendy. We were living in an apartment that was adjacent to the, to the 60 freeway in Chino. I used to feel soothed listening to the traffic go by, a steady stream of noise, which was the exact opposite of where we were headed. When showing property, I have to remind myself to shut up and just allow the customer to stand there in the silence because the silence is such a stark change for people. After an uncomfortable minute, I like to say, and that's how it sounded with all the, the week, week in traffic we got up there, was pointing to the empty road. The drive up to the place was uneventful except for the white knuckle shifting and sneak a tote driving with my parents behind. When we got out, when we just got, when we got just out of Mojave headed to Hatchapi, Wendy noticed that there was a way station that said all trucks need to pull into way. I was super uncomfortable with pulling in there for three reasons. The first was that our truck was really a mid-sized moving van and in no way required to pull in there. <laughs> we did have a, a smoke or two in the truck and the third was shifting, especially the thought of shifting in front of some highway patrol officers. I did follow Commander Wendy's instructions. If I was captain of that moving van, then I am sure she would have claimed the title of commander or general. Under the general's order, we pulled the van right up there. I am glad that <laughs> we were the only trucker needing to get weighed. As we pulled up there before I got the truck to start, 
the truck to a stop, they were announcing for us to pull off though. Unfortunately for me, I stopped the van. I did say, oh shit, as we stopped in anticipation of the shifty start. I attempted to get it going in second and now second gear was giving me troubles. So yes, I popped the clutch and stalled in front of what I assumed was a roll of highway patrol officers. Maybe it was just one guy. No matter who was watching, they were laughing. And I still needed to get this thing going. I got second to a glitch forward and then I hit it to third and eased that clutch out so slow. We had a very good takeoff gracefully bouncing down the road for about 100 feet. <laughs> Tell you what though, after we uh, got through that, we were ready for another one of those topes. And a good laugh. Arriving at our new place was exciting. The stunning views were crazy and pulling the moving truck down the driveway was even crazier. One of the appealing features to that ranch was the only access to the home was off a single lane dirt road that was bordered on one side by a cliff. Beside the nickname of Hollywood's house, the locals all also called our place the Cliffhanger House. Personally, I know the people don't like others looking down on them, and our place was perched right at the edge of the mountain looking down on everyone. We got all the movers in and were able to use furniture and sheets to attempt to create a bedroom for us and little Logan. It wasn't the best of circumstances at first, not as much adult time as I would have liked. If Logan uh, passed gas in his sleep, we heard it. Open floor plans are great. Uh, are great. Rooms are probably really cool if you don't have kids. It was super exciting to watch my father drive off in the moving truck van. He was able to give it turn around and he even hauled, handled <coughs> the weird start from the from second. He did cut the corner too tight at the top of the hill, tweaking the back of the truck to a point right to the edge of flipping down the cliff, but powered through. Must have found third gear. I can't remember saying I hope he doesn't try that way station. <laughs> uh, chapter two, settling in. <clears throat> our real estate unprofessional that sold us our home and land sold us having two parcels. The lower parcel was advertised having a private driveway as well as, well as a buildable engineered pad. We were so excited to move out on this property and have no neighbors. We now know, owned a full 47 and a half acres with no with an extra lot ready to build. Our plan on moving out to the country to build Wendy's spa destination for saws and wellness. We were, uh, we were both so excited that we could work for ourselves and build something truly great and fulfilling. What a surprise we were in for. We all got settled in, but there was not much adult time going on inside the house in the first couple months. We had to make bedrooms out of sheets and, and dressers at first. We were getting settled and excited to start, start working towards building the spa retreat. We regularly drove down to the lower patch to start the sun, watch the sunrise and set planning for the spa dream. I can remember one night a large motorhome drove down the lower pad parking and started setting up camp. Wendy went out with a shotgun and let him know he was trespassing. And this old man tried to argue that he goes up camping uh, on this lot a lot. He left reluctantly. We had to put a gate to the lower pad. It's not like we're going to let people use our newly bought land for anything. We had laughingly said, this is, is why we wanted out of the city. We are not sharing this campsite. We did pull up a gate. Uh, we did put up a gate and that's when all the excitement began. The other neighbor whose ranch was directly below us were the biggest haters of us. I don't think they liked that we moved in and the house looked over their property. We had words with them about our gate on the phone and I let him know I was gonna shoot him if he attempts to take our gate down. Little did we know that our private driveway was a, actually an easement for the neighbors and our buildable pad was actually a fire, turner engine, a fire engine turnaround, which happens to be the most ironic contradiction to how everything eventually worked out. I went to the recorder's office and researched our property. It was right there in black and white. Our buildable pad and private driveway was actually an easement for an unhappy neighbor and a fire engine turnaround. I was furious. Who the hell do these idiots think they're effing with? I marched right into the broker's office. The broker who advertised in black and white and disclosed to us that there was a private driveway and build a pad. He said, I effing lied to you, sue me. But he said the real word, yeah? This little tiny man sitting behind a big desk is going to talk to me that way? I wonder if that little weasel knows how close he came to flying that day. His office has a nice view of the lake. We actually looked into filing suit against him and found that the cost to sue was too high. In addition, he had heirs and emissions insurance or even a green, or a green light to lie and be shady. 
This one moment, however, was the first time I found interest in real estate. The neighbor below us hated it, not as much for the easement issue, but more so that Wendy and I were willing, not willing to take aggression and we dished out our own. His wife liked to call us Hollywood and the <coughs> builder of our little house was, the, was from Hollywood and in the film industry. In addition, we were in LA and so to a backward country lady, we were all Hollywood. Just to put in this little perspective, this lady drove around with a license plate that said, all you princesses hail the queen. And she acted just like that. Mr. Bad Neighbor thought he was so tough and, could take, uh, and couldn't take me calling him off, so he started the shooting war. Every night around 2 a.m., this angry neighbor went shooting at his gun range below his house. It was instant, instantly loud as our house was at the apex of the mountain and his little gun range was below the canyon. After about a week, and I'm sure hundreds of dollars in ammunition for him, we discovered that our quiet enjoy yeah. Where, yeah. discovered that he was shooting on his way out or home from work. He would he worked odd hours and we using that to attack our quiet enjoyment of our property. We called the sheriff and they let us know it was perfectly legal in the area we lived to shoot. In doing that, he did just imply, but told us we could do the same. Welcome to the country. Wendy figured out his schedule and got on the 12 gauge when he was sleeping. It only took a handful of shots and three nights before the shooting war was over. <laughs> However, this was just the beginning of the problems with the road. Our other neighbor was out, out one morning we whacking the driveway to the second pad fire engine turn around. I let him know that was our property and we we're not allowing access. He was one of the neighbors that had easement rights. However, he wanted, he wanted to assert that he had them. He didn't have easement rights, but he wanted to assert that he did have them. He had it out for us because of the harsh words from the other neighbors. This guy ripped down our road sign to our house on Deer Creek. It was all bad vibes with threats and problems. Wendy put up a sign in place of that sign cursing who did the damage. It was pretty funny to see that on the signpost. I figured no one would mess with that as it was kind of witchy. Out of all the original people, we had one cool neighbor, Amory and Bruce. They smothered, they smoothed it all over with the other two letting them know we, we were sold a private driveway. That one neighbor who ripped down the side made amends with us and we spoke many times. <clears throat> I think we even had him over for dinner. It seems like everyone on the mountain acts tough until you man up. Then there is respect and some friendship that happens. Sometimes after that, the old timer took his own life over problems with his own property build out. What kind of place did we move to?